Hello everyone, welcome to the class. All right. Welcome, a very warm welcome to all of you. Okay. So today what we are doing basically is we are clearing our doubts uh, of this chapter called the Kings and Chronicles. So we just wait for some time. Let more people come in and जो आपको जिस भी section में doubt है you can tell me about the section and I'll definitely uh, explain that section to you. So you can just drop drop down your request, drop down your doubts in the comment section uh, in the live chat and I'll definitely be explaining that to you. All right. So just let's go through the chapter, see if you have any doubts, something that you did not understand. कुछ भी है जो आपको नहीं समझ में आया आप मेरे को बता सकते हो and all those who are in the uh, here in the class. Uh, most 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 welcome guys so we'll start and whatever doubts you have you can just post it in the comments and i will definitely clear that uh, hello vishwajit how are you good afternoon welcome to the class All right, guys. I'm waiting for your doubts. Whatever doubts you have, you can just post it here, uh, and we'll start with. Uh, we we'll, I'll start clearing that. Hello, Asta. How are you? All those who are here, you guys are most, most, most welcome to the class. So yes, let's just start with our doubt clearing session. Whatever doubts you have, you can just uh, tell me. आपको जो भी इस chapter में कोई section अगर नहीं समझ में आया है तो आप मेरे को बता सकते हैं and we'll be clearing that up for you. Uh, era of Akbar mainly. All right, Sachin, I'll definitely do that. So. Um, आस्था हिस्ट्री कैसे लर्न करूं? आस्था आई वुड सजेस्ट दैट यू स्टार्ट लर्निंग आपने पहले अगर लर्न करना शुरू किया होता इट वुड हैव बीन वेरी इजी बट इफ यू को टेल मी आस्था आपने कितने चैप्टर्स हो गए हैं और कौन से चैप्टर्स रह रहे हैं जिनमें आपको प्रॉब्लम हो रही है लर्निंग में आई एल बी एबल टू एक्सप्लेन दैट टू यू और राइट सो इफ यू जस्ट टेल मी आस्था दैट आई एल स्टार्ट एक्सप्लेनिंग कि आप कैसे हिस्ट्री याद कर सकते हो सच एन मूविंग ऑन टू योर क्वेश्चन Um, era of Akbar. So Akbar actually was the <coughs> third ruler in the Mughal Empire. He ascended the throne in 1542. Um, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hello, Bhumi. How are you? So he ascended the throne in 1542. He was around 13 years of age. So he had to defeat um, Hemu in the Second Battle of Panipat, which happened in 1556. and he was able to gain the uh, gain the throne then uh to 1542 mein wo paida hue 1555 56 mein he was already on the throne as far as his era is concerned we know a lot about his era through uh, the chronicles called akbar nama or ene akbari which is divided into three books and each book covers certain certain ages certain uh, certain time period of his regional year all right uh, maybe bilkul theek hu i'm absolutely hail and hearty Okay, so this uh, chronicle actually is very, very, very important. So uh, this was written by Abul Fazl, and uh, he was the court, uh, he was the court chronicle. And apart from that, he was also the minister, a spokesperson, a fearful debater for Akbar's policies. And he has written uh, the Akbar Nama or the Ene Akbari in great detail. So it has almost everything. काफ़ी सारी डिटेल्स दी गई हैं उसमें अबाउट रिगार्डिंग अकबर्स इम्पायर हाउ इट वॉज हाउ इट वॉज इंट एवरीथिंग हैज़ बिन गिवन इन डिटेल अपार्ट फ्रॉम दिस यू कैन ऑल्सो टॉक अबाउट हिज टैक्सेशन सिस्टम इसके अलावा अगर आप चाहें तो आप बात कर सकते हैं हाउ ही शिफ्टेड द कैपिटल फ्रॉम आगरा टू फतेहपुर सीकरी टू डेली एंड हाउ ही बिल्ड द बुलंद दरवाजा इन चीज़ों के बारे में हम बात कर सकते हैं अपार्ट फ्रॉम दिस यू कैन ऑल्सो टॉक अबाउट द एम्प्रज रूटीन इफ यू रिमेंबर अगर आपको एम्प्रज रूटीन याद है इफ यू रिमेंबर ही सिट्स ही गेट्स अप इट सनराइज एंड ही गोज द झरों का वहाँ पर वो दर्शन देते हैं लोगों को ओके okay? 
yes sachin tell me uh, what doubt do you have you can tell me whatever doubts you have i'll clear that up uh rakshit paths to modernization i think that will be done this saturday और राइट सो यू कैन टेल मी भूमि आस्था आपको कोई भी किसी में डाउट है तो आप प्लीज uh, बता दीजिए कैज यू कैन कीप गोइंग थ्रू द चैप्टर सी इफ यू डोंट अंडरस्टैंड समथिंग जस्ट लेट मी नो वट एफ यू नॉट अंडरस्टूड एंड आई एक्सप्लेन दैट टू यू भूमि इज एनी थिंग यू हैव नॉट अंडरस्टूड जो आपको नहीं समझ में आ रहा है आस्था कैन यू प्लीज टेल मी हाउ मेनी चैप्टर्स यू हैव कंप्लीटेड देन आई बी एबल टू हेल्प यू विद द लर्निंग ऑल्सो ओके सो दीवाने आम इज अ प्लेस आम ठीक है आम का मतलब क्या होता है आम जनता द कॉमन पीपल All right, Sachin. So, Am means a place. Diwani Am is a place where the king would be meeting the commoners and would be hearing to their uh, request. Would be hearing to um, Idol Kingdom. All right. Would be hearing to their request. Would be hearing to their complaints. अगर उनकी कोई complaint है, वो सारी चीजें सुनना. That was Diwani. That was done in Diwani Am. दीवाने खास इज बेसिकली फॉर द फॉर द खास लोग मतलब बेसिकली इट वॉज फॉर द स्पेशल पीपल बेसिकली इट वॉज फॉर द एडमिनिस्ट्रेटर्स सो वट एवर डिसीजन रिगार्डिंग द एम्पायर इज टू बी टेकन विच इज नॉट टू बी डिस्कस्ड आउट इन द ओपन लाइक द टैक्सेशन सिस्टम और कैंसलिंग ऑफ जिजिया और ऑल ऑफ दैट वुड बी डिस्कस्ड इन द दीवाने खास ओके आई होप दैट इज क्लियर सचिन ओके सो हरी ओम Uh, is asking me about the ideal kingdom okay so uh, let us move on to this now uh how you when we talking about the ideal kingdom they had certain ways and measures through which they could portray all right portray this notion of ideal kingdom fine so first was the divine light now you have to understand that we are talking about muslim rulers okay we have to talk about we talking about muslim rulers they can't claim direct divinity from allah that is not possible okay wo directly allah se divinity claim nahi kar sakte hain because wo cheez islam mein allowed nahi hai okay so they have to come up with a you know way and method through which they could claim divinity fine divinity ka matlab hota hai ki apne aap ko directly god se associate karna fine ab they could not associate themselves with allah directly so they came up with a way now they said that we uh, mughals have uh, we have been blessed with this light which is been emanating from the god which has been emanating from the ultimate being ओके okay? तो अब ये जो लाइट है ये जो फली आजादी की हम बात कर रहे हैं दिस लाइट दैट वी टॉकिंग अबाउट वेयर इज दिस कमिंग फ्रॉम सो इसके पीछे एक स्टोरी है दैट मंगोल क्वीन अलंकुआ शी वाज रेस्टिंग इन हर टेंट एंड शी वाज इम्प्रेग्नेटेड बाय दिस रे ऑफ सनशाइन ओके इम्प्रेग्नेटेड बाय दिस रे ऑफ सनशाइन एंड द चाइल्ड शी बोर्ड जो उनका बच्चा पैदा हुआ जो उनका प्रिंस पैदा हुआ ही वॉज ही बेसिकली वॉज द कैरियर ऑफ द डिवाइन लाइट एंड इट वॉज कैरियर इट वॉज पास इट पास ऑन फ्रॉम वन जनरेशन टू अनादर एंड द मुगल किंग्स ओके द मुगल किंग्स हैव बीन प्लेस्ड इन द हाइस्ट रंग ऑफ द हायर आर की एंड दे आर द वंस हु रिसीविंग दिस डिरेक्ट ग्रेस फ्रॉम द गॉड ये जो लाइट है ये जो फर्री आजादी है जो उनको डायरेक्टली भगवान से मिल रही है और इसी से वो अपनी डिविनिटी क्लेम कर रहे हैं दैट हमारा जो वट एवर आर रूल इज दैट आर रूल इज डिवाइनली ओरडेन इट इज बीन आस्ट टू अस हमें भगवान ने परमिशन दी है कि हम इस तरीके से रूल कर सकें और राइट ठीक है सो वॉट इज हैपनिंग हेयर सो वट वी सी य तो हम क्या देख रहे हैं कि फर्री आजादी इज अ लाइट विच इज बीन एमिनेटिंग फ्रॉम विच इज एमिनेटेड फ्रॉम अल्लाह इट सेल्फ एंड इट इज बीन पास डाउन फ्रॉम जनरेशन टू जनरेशन टू द मुगल किंग्स ओके ये वाला क्लियर है हरी होम डिड यू अंडरस्टैंड द डिवाइन लाइट 
तो डिवाइन लाइट बेसिकली बच्चे ज्यादा कुछ नहीं है ये एक तरीका है डिविनिटी क्लेम करने का अब वो लोग डिविनिटी डायरेक्टली अल्लाह से क्लेम नहीं कर सकते दैट वॉज नॉट अलाउड इन इस्लाम तो उनको कुछ तरीका ढूंढना था और क्या तरीका ढूंढना उन्होंने उन्होंने कहा कि चलो ठीक है हम अल्लाह से डायरेक्टली क्लेम नहीं कर सकते तो हम क्या करेंगे वॉट एवर इज कमिंग आउट ऑफ अल्लाह सो अल्लाह से एक लाइट बाहर आ रही दिस डिवाइन लाइट विच इज नोन एज फर्री इजादी ओके तो ऐसा माना जाता है कि हर मुगल किंग ठीक है हर मुगल बादशाह में वो लाइट वो फर्री इजादी आपको मिलेगी ही मिलेगी ओके इज दिस क्लियर हरिओम आई होप यू अंडरस्टूड दी आई द डिवाइन लाइट ओके सचिन आई आंसर योर क्वेश्चन जस्ट लेट मी फर्स्ट एक्सप्लेन दिस और फिर मैं आगे आती हूं ओके ना so now pain uh they had to find a way to represent this divine light isn't it so how do you think they represented this divine light okay hello abdullah how are you so he uh, they represented this divine light through paintings up you know they have been very familiar with the european paintings and they always saw that in european paintings jesus christ and virgin mary have been represented with a halo all right and this halo okay and this halo was something this halo was something which represented their divine origin that they are basically coming from god all right so they started using all right they started using these paintings unhone ye paintings ko use karna shuru kiya they started using this concept of halo to basically portray the divine light you can see here this is jahangir okay ye jahangir hai aap dekh rahe ho uske piche ek bada sa ye jo light hai okay can you see the huge light which is right behind him और लाइट एंड यू कैन सी एंजल्स ये आपको एक छोटे छोटे एंजल्स दिख रहे होंगे वो कैरिंग दिस डिवाइन लाइट सो व्हाट इज दिस क्लेम दिस बेसिकली शोज द डिविनिटी ऑफ द किंग ओके नाउ लेट अस सी अनदर थिंग एंड हाउ व्हिच इन हाउ अनदर मेथड थ्रू व्हिच दे पोर्ट्रेट दैट देयर वाज एन आइडियल किंगडम दैट देयर वाज एन आइडियल किंगडम so next what we have is a unifying force okay now we all know that the mughal empire was a comprehensive one we have hindus jainas zoroastrians muslims all living under the same roof fine the source of peace and stability stood the emperor above all of these religious and ethnic group sabse upar in sabse kaun hai who is the source of peace and stability among all these groups it is the emperor fine he is the one who mediated among them unke beech mein koi problem hogi to wahi mediate karenge wahi dekhenge cheeze ki cheeze sort ho jaye all right and he made sure that justice and peace prevail between all of the groups why justice in the sense kisi bhi religion ko uh, ऐसा नहीं लगना चाहिए कि उनको उनका रिलीजन फॉलो करने की आज़ादी नहीं है ऐसा नहीं लगना चाहिए कि कोई दूसरा रिलीजन उनके रिलीजन पे हार्म करने की कोशिश कर रहा है और इन सब इन सब ग्रुप्स के बीच में दे हैज़ टू बी पीस व्हिच इज़ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दे हैव टू हैव अ पीसफुल को एग्जिस्टेंस फाइन सो दैट इज वाई अबुल फैजल केम अप विद दिस कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ सुलेही कुल विच इज एप्सल्यूट पीस वट डू यू मीन बाई दिस इन सुलेही कुल एनी थिंग इज अलाउड यू हैव फुल फ्रीडम टू एक्सप्रेस योर रिलीजन यू हैव फुल फ्रीडम टू फॉलो योर रिलीजन आपको जो भी मन है यू हैव फुल रिलीजियस फ्रीडम बट दिस वन थिंग यू हैव टू बिलीव यू केन नॉट अंडर माइन द अथॉरिटी ऑफ द स्टेट और आप अपने आप में लड़ नहीं सकते हो ओके जो राष्ट्रियंस आर बेसिकली पीपल हु आर कमिंग फ्रॉम ईरान इस्लाम से पहले वो लोग जोरास्ट्रियंस थे और वो वही फॉलो कर रहे थे ससानियन एम्पायर इफ यू रिमेंबर इन क्लास इलेवेंथ हरी ओम दैट इज वॉट जोरास्ट्रियंस आर फाइन सो दे केम अप दिस पॉलिसी ऑफ सुलेही कुल सो सुलेही कुल मेंट दैट यू हैव टू एग्जिस्ट पीसफुली एंड दिस इज कंडीशन यू बी अलाउड टू एग्जिस्ट पीसफुली बट द कंडीशन इज दैट यू विल नॉट अंडर माइन द अथॉरिटी ऑफ द स्टेट एंड यू नॉट गोइंग टू फाइट अमंगस्ट योर सेल्फ आप एक दूसरे के साथ नहीं लड़ोगे देर हैज टू बी नो रिलीजियस फाइटिंग एंड यू आर नॉट गोइंग टू अंडर माइन द अथॉरिटी ऑफ द स्टेट fine now the idea of sulehi kul was represented was implemented through various measures first was that the nobility comprised of iranis turanis afghanis dakhanis rajputs sab the okay it was a mixture it was like a guldasta and they were given position purely on the basis of their merit purely on the basis of their service and purely on the basis of their loyalty not on the basis of their not on the basis of their religion 
fine to make sure that there's religious equality akbar also abolished the pilgrimage tax and usne jizya bhi abolish kar diya tha and according to him this was based on religious discrimination okay to so administration may be okay administration may be you had to follow uh administration may be the policy of sulehi kul had to be followed because uh, akbar and aurangzeb would give grants to those buildings those temples who have been destroyed during war to is tarike se inhone puri koshish ki kya karne ki that there is equality is this clear ye wala samajh mein aa gaya haryom did you understand this uh guys i'll be attending to all your questions don't worry main abhi aap sabke questions attend karungi hello smiley Uh, Hariyom, is this clear? Sachin, map questions this chapter say definitely aayenge. So prepare your maps thoroughly. You will have a map list, I'm sure. आपके पास एक map list जरूर होगा, तो please उसको अच्छे से prepare करना. Yes, that is absolutely true, Bhumi. Most of the people were non-Muslims, and that is why uh, the ulema was really against that fact. Okay, uh, Hariyom, I hope you understood who Zoroastrians are. So, guys, any other doubt? Uh, Hariyom, here till you understand me, okay? If you could please tell me. Okay, so who is the author of Badsha Nama and Alamgir Nama? Uh, Badsha Nama was written by Abdul Hamid Lahori, and Alamgir Nama was actually written by Aurangzeb himself. Okay, next is just sovereignty as a social contract. Now there was a social contract between the king and his people. Uh, the king would protect the four uh, essences of his subject, which is uh, their property, their life, their honor, their faith. Okay, and in return, the, the in return the king only demanded two things. The king uh, king demanded absolute obedience and a share in the resources. In the sense, he demanded a certain form of taxation through which he could basically continue governing the empire. Okay, so this is what your ideal kingdom was, and this is how they portrayed the notion of ideal kingdom. Okay, all right. What else, guys? Any doubts? Uh, any other doubt? anything else that you guys did not understand please do let me know whatever you not understood guys please take your time go through the chapter see what you have not understood uh sachin i hope you have a map list aapke paas aapki map list hai i'm sure it, it would have been provided to you by your school so i'm sure you have a map list so prepare that map ठीक है जो भी उस मैप लिस्ट में चीजें दी गई है ना उसको बहुत अच्छे से प्रिपेयर करना ओके विमेन्स कंडीशन इन अकबर पीरियड सच इन पर्टिकुलरली अकबर पीरियड और यू वॉन्ट मी टू एक्सप्लेन द इंपीरियल हाउस होल्ड वट इज गिवन इन द बुक और यू वॉन्टिंग सम जनरल इंफॉर्मेशन So Sachin, uh, as far as Akbar is concerned, he actually made a lot of effort to improve the condition of women in his period. So he was the one who increased the marriageable age, uh, imperial household. Okay, yes, I'll do that. So one second. All right. So this imperial household or the domestic world was known as the harem. Now harem means a sacred place. This is where uh, this household, this harem, would consist of the emperor's wives, his concubines, his near dear relatives, uh, emperor's wives, distant relatives, mothers, step mothers, foster mothers, daughters, daughters-in-law, sister, aunt, uncle. Sorry, not uh, uncle, aunts, children, etc. And then there would be some female slaves and servants. All right. So every, uh, you know, any female aspect, okay, any female member who was associated. um yes who was associated to the king who was associated to the king in some way or the other was given a place in the harem in the royal harem or the imperial household fine okay now 
For both for the Rajput clans as well as the Mughals, marriage was a way of cementing political relations and forging alliances. We all know that Rajputs and Mughals married each other because they wanted to cement political relations. If you remember that Amir Jodha Bai was married to Akbar just so that Akbar does not attack जयपुर अगर अकबर जो है वो आमिर को अटैक ना करे और इसीलिए उन्होंने उनसे शादी की थी सो जो यू नो मोर देन रिलेशनशिप इट वाज लाइक अ पॉलिटिकल अलायंसेस व्हिच वाज डन टू फॉर्ज पॉलिटिकल रिलेशनशिप्स है ना ताकि बाकी जो किंगडम्स हैं उनके साथ अच्छा रिलेशनशिप रहे इट वाज डन बेसिकली फॉर दैट पर्टिकुलर एस्पेक्ट ओके all right so the gift of territory was often often associated with the gift of daughter in marriage फाइन अब जैसे मान लेते हैं कि किसी राजा ने मेरे ऊपर विक्ट्री हासिल कर ली मेरे आ, मेरे देश के ऊपर विक्ट्री हासिल कर ली है ओके सो इज अ पीस ट्रीटी व्हाट विल आई डू आई विल ऑफर माय डॉटर इन मैरिज ओके एंड इन रिटर्न आई विल गेट द राइट्स टू गवर्न माय नेशन अकॉर्डिंग टू माय ओन फ्री विल बट आई विल ऑलवेज बी लॉयल मैं अंडर अकबर की ही रहूंगी ठीक है बट आई बी गिवन द राइट टू गवर्न एज आई सी फिट fine and this was you know cemented this alliance was cemented on the basis of marriage and this marriage was obviously marriage of alliance okay it was a political marriage fine now so there was clear distinction in the mogul household so we have begums we have aghas and we have aghachas theek hai aghas begum kon hai na begums are those who are uh, who are the legally married wives of the emperor and who are coming from royal families okay royal birth hai unka they are basically prince or princesses okay then we have other wives who are the aghas who are not who are wives of the king definitely but they're not noble by birth okay wo noble nahi hai they come from a lesser family fine now uh the begums married of uh, often married after receiving huge amounts of cash and valuables as dover which is meher naturally receiving a higher status and greater attention from their husbands than did the aghas so what is happening here so the since the begums are coming from a very uh, you know affluent background bahut affluent backgrounds se aa rahi hain bahut rich backgrounds se aa rahi hain they would be receiving huge amounts of money huge amounts of cash uh from their fathers matlab achhi khasi unko dowry milti thi and this is the reason they uh, got greater attention from their husbands than the aghas ever could fine lastly we have the aghachas which are the concubines and they occupy the lowest position in the hierarchy fine something smells really bad okay now all of these people all of uh, the begums the aghas the akhachas they would receive a monthly allowance in cash and was supplemented by gifts uh, according to their status or whatever तो उनको सब मंथली अलाउंसेस मिलते थे इन द फॉर्म ऑफ कैश बेसिकली ताकि वो अपनी चीजें अपना घर अपने खर्चे को चला सके और राइट ठीक है ना द अघा एंड द अघाचास ऑल्सो कुड राइट टू द प्राइस टू द पोजिशन ऑफ बेगम डिपेंडिंग ऑन टू थिंग्स डिपेंडिंग ऑन देर विल डिपेंडिंग ऑन द हजबेंड विल एंड इफ दे प्रोवाइडेड द हजबेंड इफ दे प्रोवाइडेड Uh, okay, Sachin. Let me just explain this first, and then I'll move on to paintings also. Okay. Uh, all right. So, uh, so the Agha and Khachas will also move uh, in the hierarchy depending on the husband's will, and if they provided the husband with a son, and if they did not have, if they already did not have four wives, they could move in the position. So, love and motherhood actually played very important roles here. यस मरियम मकानी मरियम मकानी और मरियम उस जमानी एंड ये जितने भी टाइटल्स हैं ओके दे वो गिवन टू द पर्सन हु बेसिकली गेव बर्थ टू द प्रिंस हु बेसिकली गेव बर्थ द नेक्स्ट किंग जो भी नेक्स्ट किंग को जन्म देता था उसको ही ये टाइटल्स मिलती थी फाइन हेलो सिमरन Apart from wives, there were numerous male and female servants which populated uh, the entire household. बहुत सारी चीजें perform करते थे, like much of cooking, cleaning, to which tasks which require skill and intelligence. We also have eunuchs. Eunuchs are basically khwaja siras. Now eunuchs are people who are castrated. मतलब they cannot have sexual desires. They cannot वो uh, sexually active नहीं होते हैं. 
Fine. So these quadraceras or these eunuchs moved between the external internal life of the household. Matlab internally bhi involved hoti the or externally bhi usko guard kar rahe hoti the. They would act as guards, they would act as servants and sometimes they would also act as agents for women who were engaging in any form of commerce or trade. Okay. After Noor Jahan, princesses actually began to have a good control over financial resources. Uh, Jahanara's daughter, uh, Shah Jahan's daughter, Jahanara and Roshanara enjoyed an annual income which was equal to that of the highest mansabdars. Highest mansabdari thi 5000. Okay, unka jo annual income tha, wo actually usse kahi zada tha. Kiska Jahanara aur Roshanara ka. Okay. And Jahanara also received all the revenues from the port city of Surat, which was obviously very lucrative, very lucrative trade. Tha. But now you can say that Jahanara was a good amir thi because she was receiving all of these. Okay? okay? So uh, this was important and they also undertook, since they had money, uh, women also undertook certain projects like Shah Jahan's daughter uh, Jahanara was responsible for designing the entire Chandini Chok. Design kiya hai. Fine. We also have a book written by Gulbadan Begum named Humayu Nama. Now Gulbadan Begum was Humayu's sister and Akbar's aunt. And she has given us a frequent look into what uh, happened inside the emperor, happened inside the harem. Uh, and she's written no eology, matlab, kisi se kisi ko praise nahi kiya hai. but she's dealt in great details about the conflict, about the tensions. And everything is how uh, elderly people played a very important role in resolving conflicts. Okay, is this clear? Sachin Hariyom, is this clear? Okay. Hello Kratika, how are you? Alright, so as far as paintings are concerned, now, we all know that Mughals have produced a bunch of miniature paintings, isn't it? But these paintings were not actually allowed because uh, Ulema is she's ki bilkul against thi because Ulema painting karna allow nahi karti thi. Okay. So why was the painting, why was painting not allowed? Because it is written in Quran that you can't paint live objects. Jo living cheese hai, usko aap paint nahi kar sakte ho because what you're trying to do is you're trying to appropriate. Aap bhagwan ki power ko appropriate karne ki koshish kar rahe ho, which can't be with anyone but only God. Thik hai? Alright, that is the reason that Ulema was completely against painting. Fine. But the Mughals obviously had produced a lot of painting. They have painters coming from Iran like uh, Ab uh, like Abdus Samad, Lahori. We have so many painters, Mi Sayyid Ali, who were coming from Iran. Okay. So it was finally Abul Faisal who came up with this conclusion that through painting, we're not trying to appropriate Allah's position, absolutely not. We're just trying to feel closer to him by creating his creations. We're closer to him when we do painting, when we're doing something we are passionate about. Okay, this is what is there in painting. Anything else? Did you understand this? I hope you're doing well. Yes. He's described as the magical art. Absolutely. Okay, Sachin, I'll definitely do that. Don't worry. I'll definitely keep a doubt class of Bhakti Sufi also. No issues. Definitely will do that. What else? Kratika, I was just uh, clearing the doubts. That's why I'm not asking questions. Chapter ki, when I'm teaching the chapter, I'll definitely ask you questions. Don't worry.
you can tell me all your doubts guys if there's anything else please do let me know we'll explain this we'll complete this chapter then anyone else has any doubts you can keep posting your doubts About this far within our ruler. Yes, I'll do that. Uh, but you, you, I think I should. You should expect long questions from this chapter. Imperial household is something which usually eight marks me aata hi aata hai. Okay, so you can expect to very uh, one long question definitely. Okay, you can also expect a lot of one markers from this chapter. Uh, the imperial household, the one which I just explained. That usually comes uh, a lot. बहुत बार वो eight marks में आया है. You can also expect a lot of one markers from this because इसमें बहुत सारे वो छोटे-छोटे words हैं, which I think you should remember. So that uh, also can come as uh, you know, वो आ सकता है. आपका one markers इससे बहुत important है. So I think one markers and eight markers are the most expected questions from this chapter. एट uh, मार्कर्स भी इसमें काफ़ी सारे हैं यू नो देर सर्टन सेक्शंस विच इफ यू स्टार्ट राइटिंग काफ़ी सारे आ सकते हैं ठीक है मैप में बच्चे मैप में ओनली दैट विल कम सचिन आई एम श्योर यू हैव अ मैप लिस्ट विच इज बीन प्रोवाइडेड टू यू बाय द स्कूल ओके तो मैप में आपको सिर्फ वही चीज़ें आएंगी जो आपके मैप लिस्ट में मैंशन है ओके लाइक मे बी यू कैन बी आस्ट टू मार्क काबुल यू कैन बी आस्ट टू मार्क डेली तो ये सारी चीजें विच द मोस्ट थिंग्स विच एसोसिएट विद द मुगल एम्पायर ओके जस्ट टेक अ लुक इट योर मैप लिस्ट एंड यू विल फाइंड ऑल द प्लेसेस विच यू हैव टू नो फ्रॉम दिस चैप्टर ओके एंड इफ यू डू नॉट हैव अ मैप लिस्ट प्लीज 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 Do those paintings okay with this uh, with the marriage of Hindu daughter and Akbar? Beyond the frontiers, I'll uh, definitely do that. Hurry up, one minute. Uh, but in map, actually, I'll be practicing with you in the special classes. Uh, because here it's a little difficult. I do not have the tools to make you practice map. Uh, that I'll be doing uh, in the special classes. Just give me a second, hurry up. I'm now explaining to you. Okay, just give me two minutes. uh kritika they were not uh, absolutely not okay with marrying their hindu daughter with a mughal prince definitely not okay but it was something which was needed to be done uh unko zaruri tha karna it was something which was absolutely required so kehte na dil pe patthar rakh ke kuch cheeze karni padti hain yes you know he was defeated and had he decided to fight he would have lost a lot of people hai na so yes that is the reason uh hariyom please give me 2 minutes i'll definitely get back to your doubt let me clear others doubts also okay i'll definitely get back to your doubt just give me 2 minutes yes so three uh through marriage alliances absolutely isn't it uh sachin if you have not received any list from your school please do ask from your teacher she will give you a map list as to what you have to learn and what you don't have to learn exactly what you have to learn wo aapko bata denge okay so yes please do that i think that is very important okay wo list hona aapke paas zaruri so that you know aapko pata rahega ki aapko kaun sa practice karna hai kaun sa nahi karna hai fine you can't practice the entire thing all right so moving to the next doubt which is beyond the frontiers so um there was political and diplomatic relations have always existed between the mughal kings okay and the safavid rulers in iran fine now both of them both of them both the safavid rulers and mughal kings they wanted to control that pass in hindukush which gave them access to north india 
all right so the moguls had access to that pass which gave them access to north india it was only through that pass that they were able to cross the hindu kush mountain and reach north india fine theek hai aur isliye the constant aim of the moguls was to ward off any danger that might have on that uh, you know they might have on that particular pass ओके okay? क्योंकि अगर उन्होंने उस पास को कंट्रोल नहीं किया अगर उसको अपने अंडर नहीं रखा एनी वन ओके एनी वन कूड हैव कम इन एनी वन कूड हैव यू नो हैव हैड एक्सेस टू नॉर्थ इंडिया एंड इफ एनी वन कम्स इन द डेफिनेटली गोइंग टू चैलेंज द मुगल एम्पायर फाइन so there were some strategic outpost kuch outpost the like kabul and khandar these were the places which needed to be controlled which needed to be under the moguls to control that pass in the hindu kush okay isiliye wo unke control mein rehna bahut zaruri tha fine so there were two uh, two places we have khandar and we have kabul now khandar has been a bone of contention between the safavids and the moguls okay so sometimes khandar was under the control of mughal sometimes it was under the control of the safavids fine okay so uh, in 1613 jahangir has sent a diplomatic envoy to the court of shah alam shah alam is the iranian ruler who is controlling the fort of khandar he uh, you know pleading saying uh, telling him ki uh, wo khandar ka fort jo hai wo mughals ko de diya jaye fine but obviously the mission failed it could not continue okay in 1622 the persian army besieged kandar matlab persian army ne as an iraqi army ne iranian army ne usko capture kar liya theek hai kisko kandar ko capture kar liya aur jo mughal army thi that was ill prepared and was not able to uh, control it was not able to protect the city okay is this clear now ये समझ में आ गया सबको आई जस्ट आंसर योर क्वेश्चन सचिन लेट मी जस्ट एक्सप्लेन दिस एंड देन आई गेट बैक टू योर क्वेश्चन ओके सो एज फार एज द मुगल्स so um next what is happening so the ottomans let's talk about the ottomans so ottoman turks they're mostly ruling in arabia okay and the relationship between the mughals and the ottomans was marked by the concern that there has to be free movement of the merchants and pilgrims uh, to where to kaaba okay if you remember in class 11th kaaba was located in the trade route direct trade route between yemen and syria all right so it was not just a religious center but it was also a very important trading center very important market fine okay now this was very true for hijaz which was under the ottoman arabia okay jahan pe where the important pilgrims uh, were centers of mecca and medina ठीक है तो इम्पॉर्टेंट पिलग्रिम्स थे जो सेंटर्स थे सेंटर था हिजाज एक्चुअली मेका और मदीना का ओके एंड दिस वाज अंडर द कंट्रोल ऑफ ऑटोमन टर्स ओके तो कोई भी मान लो इंडिया से कोई भी जा रहा है तो वो हिजाज में रुकेगा कोई कहीं से भी आ रहा है वो हिजाज में रुकेगा एंड ऑब्वियसली सिंस हिजाज इज अंडर अरेबिया दे हैव टू मेक श्योर इट इज अंडर ऑटोमस द मुगल्स हैड टू मेक श्योर दैट दे हैड गुड रिलेशन विद दी ऑटोमस फाइन ओके सो Uh, Mughal Empire, Mughal emperors would usually combine religion with commerce. So, kabi kabi, you know, when they were going on Hajj, jate time pe, uh, they would also carry their valuable merchandises to Aden and Mocha. They are both uh, ports, ठीक है? Ports हैं जहाँ से trading होती है. And they would distribute and do what, जो भी वो वहाँ पे चीजें बेचते थे, whatever they would be selling there, uh, जो भी चीजें उन्होंने बेची, उन चीजों को वहाँ पे ही charity में दे देते थे, या फिर it would be given to those people who be looking after the shrines, fine? But Aurangzeb को पता चला कि whatever funds we are you know giving away in the form of charity is being misappropriated मतलब उसका गलत इस्तेमाल हो रहा है तो ये उसने ही कहा था कि ये चीजें हम हम वहाँ distribute नहीं करेंगे this would be distributed in India because India also is the house of God as much as Mecca is fine is this clear now okay 
so uh, mughal uh, so emperor i think was the most influential king but there are certain reasons for that now first of all he was the first one who understood that religion respecting all religion is very important second of all he questioned everything किसी भी चीज को बिना समझे बिना जाने बिना क्वेश्चन किए वो एक्सेप्ट करते ही नहीं थे ही वुड नॉट डू दैट ओके ही कैंसिल द जजिया द पिलग्रिमेज टैक्स एंड यू नो ही रेज द मैरिजेबल एज ऑफ वीमेन टू एज सिक्सटीन ईयर्स ऑफ एज ही अबॉलिश सती ही अबॉलिश स्लेवरी ही ब्रॉड इन दिस यूनिफॉर्म टैक्सेशन सिस्टम विच वॉज वेरी गुड फॉर एवरी वन सबके लिए बहुत अच्छा था अकॉर्डिंग टू योर क्लाइमेटिक कंडीशन द सॉइल टाइप दैट यू हैव सो इट यू नो ही हैज डन थिंग्स उन्होंने ऐसी बहुत सारी चीजें की हैं विच मेक्स इम द मोस्ट इन्फ्लुएंशियल रूलर ही डिड कलेक्ट टैक्स बट इट वॉज नॉट ऑन द यू नो बिहेस्ट ऑफ द पीपल कि लोगों को परेशान करके टैक्स कलेक्ट किया जाएगा ऐसा नहीं था आई मीन वी हैव रिकॉर्ड्स एंड रिकॉर्ड्स ऑफ लोन्स विच वो गिवन आउट टू दोज फार्मर्स हु कुड नॉट हैव अफोर्डेड या फिर कभी क्रॉप फेलियर हो गया या फैमिन आ गया या सूखा पड़ गया तो उन्होंने उनको लोन्स दिए हैं विच वो नेवर टेक इन बैक ओके ताकि वो अपनी आगे की खेती अच्छे से कर सके एंड स्टिल हिज यू नो कॉफर्स वो ऑलवेज फिल्ड बिकॉज पीपल डू नॉट माइंड पेइंग सच टैक्सेज उनको प्रॉब्लम नहीं होती थी कभी टैक्सेस पे करने में so i think these are the reasons uh, and the gdp actually was highest yes the garda the western region uh, good evening chinmay from outsiders the gdp was highest during his reign sabse unchi gdp sabse achhi gdp agar hindustan ki kabhi bhi rahi hai to wo akbar ke reign mein rahi hai it was i think around 25% of the world that was your gdp Uh, Bengal alone was producing around 50 varieties of rice. Uh, there was muslin, there was you know silk, there was cotton. All of these things were getting exported, and I think that is what made Akbar the most influential ruler because he made sure that everyone was represented. He actually loved people, and I think एक ही राजा है जिनको लोगों ने title दिया महान होने का. तो कुछ तो इंसान ने बिल्कुल सही किया होगा एंड आई थिंक दिस इज द रीजन दैट ही इज बीन यू नो कॉल द मोस्ट इन्फ्लुएंशियल पर्सन एवर ओके सचिन दिस इज क्लियर What else, guys? Is there anything else you did not understand? Please let me know. और किसी को कोई भी डाउट ओके ऑल राइट गाइज सो सिंस ऑल इट आउट्स आर क्लियर आई थिंक आई एंड द क्लास हियर टुडे ऑल राइट एंड आई सी यू इन द नेक्स्ट क्लास विद अ डाउट क्लियरिंग सेशन एज वेल एज अ रिविजन सेशन सो वी बी हैप दैट विल बी हैपनिंग वेरी सोन Okay so thank you so much for coming in the class and I really hope all your doubts have been answered uh, you've understood everything aap sabko sab kuch samajh mein aa gaya hoga so i think i was able to help you with that also guys before i go i would um, i will definitely do that don't worry sachin i will definitely keep a doubt clearing session for bhakti and supi so but before i go let me tell you about the iconic subscription that we have launched i think this is a very good time to take up that subscription because you get a personal mentor all right so that personal mentor would be responsible for solving your doubts there would be weekly report there would be a study planner which will be provided to you so i think this is a very good time because sometimes if the teachers might not be available if you have to ask your doubts you can always contact your mentor okay we have launched a lot of batches so we have individual batches for science commerce and humanities humanities ke liye batch launch hua hai uh, which is uh, 
you know, uh, final, uh, final exams made easy and shine. Uh, uh, let's crack final exams in the shine batch for pre boards and I am teaching you history on that platform. We also have another batch called optionals made easy where your optional papers like psychology, Hindi and uh, informatics practices would be covered and I will be teaching you psychology on that platform. Uh, any one of you, if you know someone who knows about science and commerce, please tell them about the crash course batch for science and for commerce for 11th and 12th. Alright? And about the crash course batch for science and for commerce for 11th and 12th. Alright? And also tell them about the revisathon which is happening for class 10th, 11th and 12th for science and commerce. It's going to be your whole syllabus revised. So guys, it's, I think it's a very good time to take up your subscription. Use my code here, Nikki Life. Take up your subscription. Also, try taking subscription for a longer duration because then you will be sorted for a very long time. Also, 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 one very important thing is that subscription patterns are going to increase very soon. Okay? Subscription prices are going to increase. So I would request you all to take your subscriptions very soon because these prices are going to increase. Okay? So take it now so that you do not have any issues later. Okay. Thank you so much guys. Thank you so much for joining in. I'll see you later. Bye bye. Take care.